Today, we will be exploring the one, the only, Spring Break Art Show 2020 in New York City. We're gonna survey around, we're gonna look at some of the artists, we're gonna explore some of the curators who were there, we're gonna check out the pieces, the works, the exhibition. If you've been to the Spring Break Art Show before, you know this is one of the best art fairs in New York City. I love the Spring Break Art Show. The art show started around circa 2012, and it was originally in a schoolhouse in Nolita, that is north of, ah, north of Little Italy. It's like, what? The Spring Break Art Show was started as an emerging artist art fair. During March, it's the big come out for all of the art exhibitions in New York City. There's all the fairs, the thoroughfare, people from the art world flock from all corners of the world to be in New York City for early March. Primarily for the Armory Art Show, the flagship art show of the art season in March. But the Spring Break Art Show started in 2012 as kind of a foil to that a little bit, introducing more emerging artists, people who are less established, not always, but a good number of artists who are still on the come up in terms of their art representation. And the fair slants toward being more experimental, more adventurous, a little more, shall we say, less commercial. Some of this work is a little bit hard to hold on to conceptually. It gets a little bit daring, a little bit bold, whereas the Armory Show is more bent toward a buyer's market, people who can trust that the artists in the gallery are well established and will last a long time. The Spring Break Art Show is really about artists who want to make a statement. They have a voice and they want to present that on a grand scale in a big way and they're not afraid to get a little bit messy while they do it. You're gonna need to have a firm stomach for this one, a keen eye. You really need to open your mind at the Spring Break Art Show. That's what I found when I first attended this in this small little schoolhouse in Nolita. The schoolhouse itself was an actual schoolhouse way back decades ago. The name for the show, Spring Break, derives from its original location in that small schoolhouse. And if you think about the time of the year, March, a schoolhouse, students usually take spring break in March, hence the, I don't need to spell this out for you, you're a really smart person. When I went there the first two years, when it was in that schoolhouse, I mean, think about a schoolhouse from the early 1900s. Narrow hallways, small classrooms, really tiny tight staircases it was just a jumble of people all packed in there all these like grody artists like me who don't wash ourselves and wear funky clothes yeah we're all hanging out in there drinking beers they also serve wine at the show walking through the space and then you go into a classroom a small little classroom what it used to be for little boys and girls to learn now was converted into a pseudo art gallery the spring break art show pairs artists with curators. Curators are the people who are responsible for deciding what works go into an exhibition, how it's displayed, how it works visually and experientially with the other works that are in the space. So a curator and an, several artists perhaps sign on together to the Spring Break Art Show and they will go into one of these classroom spaces or wherever the exhibition space was in this schoolhouse and set up the exhibition. These things are gnarly. These things are nasty. These things are all together fantastic. I love them. You'll walk into one room where it's not just the paintings on the wall, but they've got things hanging from the ceiling, like bodily goopy things. You've got astroturf lining the floors. Maybe they put picket fences all along the wall. They completely co-op the space. You might go in one room where they collage the entire room floor to ceiling with magazine cutouts and then they're just projecting a video of Beyonce twerking it out. These shows are made by daring people. People with ideas, with passion, with vision, and a lot of heart. I guess what I'm trying to say is these artists in this show are radical. They are bold, they are daring, they are not for the faint of heart. They came to play. So at this show, it cost me 25 bucks to get in. Well worth the price of admission. But today, you're coming in with me. I got you covered. The show has traveled to multiple locations. It's gone from the schoolhouse to another location over by Penn Station, up closer uptown. Then it moved over to the United Nations building. This year I thought it would be in the UN building again. 
but it wasn't. In fact, it was delayed. I reached out to the coordinators of the fair earlier, asking them about the location and details, and they couldn't get to me right away. It was circa COVID-19 time. Globally, having an art show in a United Nations building when there's a global pandemic coming on, I'm not sure the United Nations would welcome a bunch of us into that space. So last minute, they got put in a, a, a location on Madison Avenue. I talked to some of the artists there and I said, did you, did you know you were gonna be in this location? They said, no, we found out just a few days ago. So I'm glad the fair was able to happen. That's just my guess. By the way, I didn't talk to anyone at the show. I don't wanna say that that is exactly what happened, but connecting the dots, I think we all know about COVID at this point. Glad we were able to make this show happen. Glad we got to see some cool art. So these artists made these incredible exhibitions, them and their curators, putting these things together to make something really awesome. And no matter what media you are partial to, this show has you covered. If you have a proclivity for painting, they got you covered. If you love drawing or collage or ceramics or installations or videos or sculptures or performance, there. So I would encourage you, and this is what I always do every year when I go to the show, is to think more broadly and expansively about the things you like as art and why someone else might appreciate something else as art and try to imagine why this artist, why this curator brought this statement, this expressive movement of sorts to this space. Let us pay homage, let us pay respect to the work that people put in. So like I said, keep in mind with each booth that we go to on this fair, and I'm about to come in with you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you run loose for a little bit and show you some works. Every once in a while, I'll run into you during this and I'll let you know about an exhibition that I really like. Uh, but walk around, see some things. I'm not gonna tell you who every artist is and every curator. Just take stock of any of the images that you really like. Pause the screen if you care to, grab some popcorn and a Coke, whatever you need to do, feel comfortable. But every once in a while, we'll check in with each other and I'll see you at the end of this video. See what you thought. All right. Uh, before we go in, can we go back to the entrance real quick? I want to show you uh, that Dr. Seuss jungle on acid that we were just in. What? Helia Guaramian. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Helia Guaramian. Gelia Guaramian? Something Guaramian? I hope I am not butchering that. You ever see videos where people try to pronounce someone's name and it was like 10, 20 years ago and now they're a household name so you're pretty familiar with how to pronounce a atypical non-Anglo-American name, but back then they were new to everybody. I hope this video ages well. I'm sorry, Helia, if it's Julia. I don't know you, but hopefully we all know you soon. I just want to pull you over here and look at Kate Klingbale's things. I hope I'm saying her name right. Klingbale? Klingbale? Lord knows I'm trying. She's got some great paintings over here. You're going to look at some things for hours. You could go through these paintings and you will always see something new you didn't see the first time. That's the mark of someone who really put in the intention. There's gross things in here. There's little scummy worm things going through the soil and whatnot. Just an unpleasantly pleasant surprise. Clear and evident craftsmen making marks, super precise, also imaginative because these spaces are somewhat uh, narrative, fictional, coming out of the mind to you on a surface. That is, that is money. That is really impressive. I appreciate Kate's work. I had never seen her work before. In fact, none of the artists in the show I've seen before. It's really nice when you get to learn about someone who's really onto something good and maybe follow their work for time to come. Instead of having just their work on a white wall, 
The Spring Break Art Show gives artists the opportunity to have the entire room to themselves and take creative choices and some big swings with that, which I always enjoy. Gallery. We have two artists on show here, Marissa Aidsman and Caitlin Ledford. And Caitlin did the painting on the wall, which again, precision, striking brushwork, really, really good color sensibility, and I like the balance that she uses between uh, the neon, the flesh tones, makes it all work together very seamlessly. Marissa Aidsman is the one doing the video installation here that you can see. It was nice to sit down, enjoy some of her work. I have no idea what she's doing right here, but it looks like she's on to something. I would be interested to see more of her work in the years to come, but I was really impressed with this just at first glance. Hey, there you are. Real quick, let me show you this one over here. This 1035 gallery, real nice. This exhibition is by 550 Gallery. They're featuring two artists, Charles Sommer and Jeffrey Owen Miller. Jeffrey Owen Miller did the installation that you're about to see, the sculptural piece and, and video and whatnot, and Charles Sommer did the wall pieces. Now, if you like texture, if you like shiny things, you're gonna go for this one. I really like the nice wall art by Simon. And then I was not expecting to see a stag, a deer, a Harry Potter Patronus standing upside down and right side up reflected 
in a pool. It's a somewhat celestial heavenly deer. There's some plastic involved and wiring. Really, really nice translucent and transparent materials that come together to form an all together a voluminous shape. Really cool what you can do with a material that looks as light as air and as clear as air to make something actually form to the human eye. Really good stuff. Alright, the 1047 booth over here, I'm into it. This one was curated by Andrew Cole and Grace Lerner. Now I should say, if you haven't noticed by now, the location we're at for this spring break show is in an office building. This is space that was previously unused. They rented out these cubicles and these offices to make this work. So in this small office, Andrew and Grace were able to position three really nice artists. Kevin Reed is the one who did the wood sculptures you see. If you could smell the cedar and the wood on this thing, it just adds to the exhibition that much more. When you can smell the materials and they're good materials, I'm about that. Tom McFarland did an amazing metal and plaster sculpture that spanned from the floor to the ceiling. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was part of the room itself. It's pretty impressive. And then the paintings are by Connor Fagan, who teeters between realist and abstract in his work. And I think again, his color making and his eye for things, it's next level. It's Adobe level. It's scientifically proven. Connor Fagan with the brush. Watch out. Yes, make me care about ceramics. I love, we have established, ceramic mugs, ceramic cups, plates, these sorts of things, wares, earthen wares, these sorts of things. But I think ceramics can also be very beautiful outside of the functional. This booth is called Dreamer's Delight by Jen Dwyer, the artist, curated by Lauren Hirschfeld. I like ceramics with a lot of technical skill, but also a little sense of humor. They get a little cheeky. And I like that, just, just a little bit. Keep you on your toes.
Looks like you've made it this far in the video. I really appreciate it and hopefully you're enjoying it. There's still more art to come, don't worry, this is not gonna be the end of it. But if you have a second, let's make an art piece together, you and me. What's that? Yes, yes, this is also part of the show. They asked me to do this at the Spring Break Art Show, actually, so you're, you're helping with the show. Right, it's a call and response, simple. I say you, and you don't respond verbally, but physically, you react to my call, you. All I need you to do, take your finger, or your stylus, or your mouse, and click the like button. It's the thumbs up, located right down there in the corner, and it lets me know that you're enjoying the show, and you wanna see more of this art in this video and future videos. So we're gonna practice right now. I'm gonna say you, and you're gonna click. Got it? All right. <clears throat> you. Great. Thanks. Hey, real quick. I found some good ones right over here. Starting with this one that has AstroTurf. I told you I love AstroTurf. I'm a sucker for it. Right in here. Laura Gilmore is the curator. Yen Yen Chao is the artist who's doing the polyurethane pieces and the watercolor in the video. So you see those little polyurethane pancakes? That's Yen Yen Chao. Rachel Cohen is a girl with the sequins. This, yes, they let me touch the work. You can, you know, touch it, go up, and the sequence change to pink, go down, and the sequence change to green. If you've ever seen that, it's come around, I think, in the last, like, one or two years. That has been a trend within fabrics and textiles. And this is whimsical. This is fun. Again, that's what this show, this is what the whole exhibition is about. Fun, exploration, adventure. You talk to the curator, they want to speak with you. Everybody who is putting on these exhibitions really loves to exchange in the dialogue because they want you to ask about the work. They want to share with you their ideas, their concepts, and you get to appreciate their work in return. Maybe take a little tchotchke away, something to remember them by. It's all fun. That's why I love the Spring Break Art Show. Very communal. Booth 1011. Yes. The artist is Christopher Chan, the curator is Millie Kai, and I am the fanboy. Appropriately titled, as long as I've got my health and my millions of dollars and all my gold, this one really takes a deep dive into the late 80s, early 90s. You're looking at Street Fighter, you're looking at arcade games, you're looking at Michael Jordan, and sneaker culture, a reference to Yeezys. Flowers, gold, and multicolored junk everywhere. This thing right here put me in a new stratosphere. The breads, the Jordan 1 breads. That's black and red. If you're not familiar with the Jordan 1 line, uh, these are iconic, iconic sneaks and we made uh, flower bases out of them. The sound, there was an audible music playing that was a little bit hard on the ears, a little heavy in that space, and that's part of what this is about too, is the experience of being in the room. Sound is also one of the media that people might choose to use in their booth to curate these shows. So good. I just want to make it clear that that is a stop motion video, stop motion video, on an arcade machine. Spring Break Art Show 2020, this is where it is. While we're walking along this show, you might see some works that you think, Alex, I don't like that, or I really like that one, that's the one that I would choose. We should all be glad and grateful that we get these artists and curators to come out just to show us things that they have made themselves to bring us joy. So as long as you find something that you like, it doesn't have to be every person's things. I definitely don't appreciate everyone's to the degree that I appreciated, say, booth number 1011. With all my health and my gold and my money, that 
for me is right up my alley as an artist, as a creative, as a person who is inspired by other art. That's my booth. You find your booth. I don't want any nasty comments down below of like, this art sucks and these people don't know what they're doing and the world is devolving into chaos and artists are the reason why. I don't want any of that stuff. Tell me which ones you like, leave a comment down below, which one of these artists, which one of these booths really spoke to you. And if you care to share why, you know what to do. All right, so I'm gonna let you free to go off and look at the show yourself. Go look at the things you wanna look at, or rather the things that I'm gonna give you to look at, and then I'll meet you right back here at the end of the video. All right, get out of here, you. quick, I don't know if you saw it, we need to leave, but, but, 
Jonathan Rosen's work, you gotta come here right now. This stuff. Hello. Here we see an artist and a curator who decided to collage an entire wall with magazine stuff. So that's the collage stuff I told you about. You can do various things with these spaces, but also the lights are pink. The installation works are digital. We're talking about interactive work here. The words are flashing at the speed of a photograph. It's flashing text that goes across the screen. Each piece of work is multiple lines that can form an idea, a concept, a sentence that is under 140 characters. So think about social media, think about how much is going out there into the ether and how much of this social media and digital life makes very little sense to us. And so this is kind of like a word collage, if you will, kind of like a Mad Lib, but without the other sentences buttressing the words that you get to choose from. As the viewer, you take a picture of the artwork and whatever your picture stops on, that is the phrase that shows up to you. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's sad. It's all a gamble. You don't know which words you're gonna get. When you go on the internet, similarly, it's kind of a gamble whenever you click on something. You might find nonsense, you might find something that interests you. That's kind of what this room represents. This sense of immediacy, a need for information, but also it's non-information and it makes you feel a certain way. Even though it might just be nonsense, it emotes a feeling. And that's kind of how our social media age works. Very quick, very rapid, very, those are synonyms. This work kind of represents and gets at what our social media digital life is. It's kind of rapid, and it's also kind of vapid. That means empty. That means offering nothing of substance. That can be very true of a lot of the things that are put out there into the digital space, which I'm sure you've seen. This is why we go to see art. People who are thinking broadly and narrowly back and forth about a topic like social media, like culture, like digital information, and then creating something to illustrate a point of feeling and emotion, a concept that we've teetered with before, but maybe you've never really put that much thought to. Jonathan Rosen now represents that in the form of these flashing texts. And if you get to see his work in the future, I think you'll enjoy it too. It's really, really good stuff. Show's over, we gotta go. And if you saw some artists that you liked during this exhibition, in the description down below, you will find a link to the show where you can find many of the artists and the galleries, the, the curators who put these together. Also, if you saw any work in the show that you liked, their website is actually selling the work. You can go online, peruse through there, and if you find something that is still available for sale and it's within your price range, you know how to click buttons. Go ahead and get yourself something. Prices range anywhere from five to, I think I saw something for 40K, 40K. So if you got 40K lying around or anywhere between there and $5, you might find something good. Friends, family, I hope you enjoyed this leisurely walk, this stroll, this evening constitutional across the Spring Break Art Show 2020 here in New York City. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, you're going to hit that little subscribe button down there. And if you want to get alerts anytime that I post something, just ding that little bell and that's what will happen in your email inbox. In the meantime, take care of yourself, stay safe, and stay creative. Peace.